This video is a little bit different than some of my other ones. Um, it's not about the Omnipod 5 or any of that stuff really. It's more about the type 1 diabetes diagnosis process, uh, especially in adults where this is not something you've grown up with and it's not something that <clears throat> oftentimes doctors will identify. Uh, so this is sort of my diagnosis story and I think it can help a lot of people in particular who might be dealing with what they think is type 2 diabetes and I'll get more into that so I'll just make this one very brief. So anyway, in 2018, I had started a new career. I was working as an occupational therapist in a hospital in the Bronx. And after a couple of months, or almost a year of working there, I started to have a variety of different physical symptoms. Um, and keep in mind, before this, I, had no, I didn't really know much about diabetes besides what I had taught in, in school, to be honest, and what I was dealing with in, in my patients. Um, so anyway, I started to have a lot of strange symptoms. I began losing a lot of weight. Um, I became incredibly thirsty all the time. I can remember just drinking tons and tons and tons of water and other liquids. Just, I was, it was unquenchable. So I was obviously going to the bathroom like crazy as well. Um, I did start to uh, feel this like weird sense of hunger that I had never felt before. Almost as if I couldn't get satisfied. I could just eat forever. And it was like none of the food was actually satisfying like my body's desire for nutrients. It was, it was really strange feeling. Also strange was I started to have very, very blurry vision. Um, I've always kind of worn glasses and I had LASIK, but it was worse. Like my prescription changed. I just really couldn't see. Everything was incredibly fuzzy all of the time and it was bizarre. Um, I also had come into really uh, get a lot of back pain. So I, I've always had slight back issues, but it, it's to the point where I could barely walk. And a big part of my job at the time was transferring patients, you know, lifting them up and making sure they can move around safely and things like that. And I just wasn't able to do it. So after a few months of dealing with those symptoms, I finally went to the doctor for what I thought was a back pain diagnosis. I was hoping for some medication or some, some rehab or something, but I had a, uh, I gave urine during the uh, physical exam and that showed really high blood glucose or not blood glucose, just glucose levels. And then I got a blood test and my, I think my blood sugar at the time was like eight or 900. So they rushed me to the hospital and I got an insulin drip via IV and the whole nine yards. And the doctor kind of told me that, Hey, you have, you know, diabetes. And they said it was type two diabetes at the time. You know, I was, so I was in shape at this point. Um, I didn't exhibit some of the physical symptoms that I think, unfortunately, doctors often look for when they're they're classifying the different types of diabetes. But anyway, they, they diagnosed me with a, a type 2 um, diabetes diagnosis. And then I started working with an endocrinologist who prescribed me metformin and glipizide, which are two oral medications to help <clears throat> manage blood sugar. And so that was kind of, that was it. Um, I became very, very strict with my diet, my exercise, learning about those medications and their side effects. And I kind of lived my life for three or four years. And it was a struggle. I had A1Cs ranging from mid sixes to mid sevens for the most part. And so I was, I was managing it, but I was barely holding on. I was being very, very strict with what I was eating. I was exercising like crazy. And I just didn't feel that good. Um, I didn't love the medications either. There was a variety of side effects that I just, I didn't like. I also tend to actually get pretty low blood sugar from the glipizide, which is a known side effect. So I was struggling. Um, fast forward to 2022, the beginning of the year, I guess it was January. So almost a year ago now, um, I, was, I was still doing the same thing. I was eating very healthy. Um, I had stopped really checking my blood sugars because I figured I'm doing everything I need to be doing. My A1C is probably fine. Like not, what would have changed? Because no, I didn't change any of the variables. Um, I went to the doctor and I got an A1C of, I think it was 11 and a half. So my doctor was like, what, what's going on? What happened? And I was like, I didn't, you know, I didn't change anything. Um, I started to, to actually work with a dietitian at that time. And it was kind of one of these, get you on a plant-based diet and help reverse your quote unquote type two diabetes. And so I became even more strict and I was really just doing absolutely everything I can or I could. And I was in the best shape of my life. I still had these weird physical symptoms of like the hunger and the thirst. Uh, but then I got another, another A1C test and it was still like 11. So at that point I had done a little bit of research and my doctor had as well to kind of say, finally, Hey, let's get you an 
antibody test and a C-peptide test. These are the two things that I want to stress for everybody who has a type 2 diagnosis, is doing everything they can to manage it, but is not making any progress and they're just not sure what is going on. So the C-peptide test measures the level of insulin that your pancreas is putting out. Um, there's a, there, I think there's two different tests, so there's different ranges that you can look for, but your, you know, your medical portal or your doctor is going to tell you which one you're using, and then you're going to see the results, and you'll be able to tell if that's high, within range, or low. Now, <clears throat> oftentimes with a type 2 diabetic, that C-peptide test is actually going to be high, because if you truly have type 2 diabetes, it typically means that you are insulin resistant. So your body is actually producing too much insulin because you're not processing it effectively and the blood sugars are gonna be high. Vice, alternatively, if you have a low C-peptide, it typically may mean that you could have one of the autoimmune versions of diabetes, which could be LADA, which is like the latent autoimmune diabetes in adults, or type one, or there's a few other variants, but it basically means your pancreas isn't working like it should be. Now, for me, I had a low C-peptide test value. I think it was like 0.5. That is one aspect of type 1 diagnosis in adults. The other one is an antibody test. And so I got tested for the antibodies. And at first, I tested negative for the antibodies. And that's because I did some research into this. There are, I think there's five total antibody tests, or five total antibodies. Oftentimes, the endocrinologist or your primary care physician is going to prescribe a test that only looks for the first three because I think they're more common. However, it's possible that you can ask up front to say, test me for all of the antibodies because in my case, I tested positive for, I guess it was the, I think it's the zinc transporter antibody. And basically, that positive result in conjunction with a low C peptide test showed that I had type 1 diabetes as an adult. Now, the reason I was able to kind of survive from 2018 or really any time before that until now was that that C-peptide level can slowly degrade over time. It doesn't have to be, you know, 100 to zero. So it's possible that it just becomes progressively more difficult for you to process foods and maintain blood sugar because you're having a little bit less insulin produced in your body over time. Likewise, with the antibodies, my understanding is that you can have those antibodies uh, present in your body from birth, but sometimes it takes like, an environmental factor to activate them. And so, for example, in my case, a lot of times my doctor actually thinks it was the stress associated with my career change that sort of re uh, resulted in a long-term elevated cortisol levels inside my body because of that stress, which then somehow triggered my the antibodies to activate and to start attacking my pancreas, resulting in, uh, you know, lowered insulin production. So from that point, I then was put on a basal insulin, and then eventually I was put on additionally bolus insulin. Um, I can say that as soon as I really got the insulin, I did start to feel those symptoms that had been there for so long subside. So the just ridiculous thirst and the never-ending or like unquenchable hunger vanished. Um, I had kind of fixed some of the vision and the weight issues previously, but I did notice that the weight came on even better now that I sort of had the insulin to process all of the, the foods. Long story short, I dealt with what I thought was type 2 diabetes for four years. I lived a, an incredibly restrictive life because I was misdiagnosed. So what I would recommend is that if you are somebody who has a type 2 diabetes diagnosis, don't immediately jump to these things because this is not the this is not the most common protocol or thing to happen. Most of the time, type two diabetes is going to be just insulin resistance, and there's a variety of things that you can do to help with that, like diet, exercise, medications, etc. If, however, you are somebody who has been dealing with type two diabetes or what you've been told is type two diabetes, you've done absolutely everything right. You're in great physical shape. You eat perfectly, you exercise all of the time, you sleep well, you take your oral medications, but your A1Cs or your average blood sugars are just not where they should be. Or if it's getting progressively harder to maintain a certain level, if you notice that it's getting worse over time, I would strongly advise you to go to your doctor and advocate for yourself 
to get a C peptide test, to get your antibodies levels test, antibody levels tested. There's no downside to doing these tests outside of if they cost money through your insurance, which I don't, I don't know. It depends on your insurance. It is surprising though, that you have to advocate. You know, I think a lot of times, and again, in my case, the doctors were resistant to the idea of me having type one for some reason. I don't know why it took so long for that to become a test that, that they were willing to do, but it proved that I was not getting the right medication. And once I did, I felt a million times better. And so I would just encourage you that just because your doctor has not recommended it yet, if you truly are doing all of those things correctly with your type two diagnosis, and it's just getting more and more difficult, why not rule out the possibility that it is sort of a late onset type one diagnosis? I didn't want it to be type one. There was definitely some resistance from me and kind of wanting to put my head in the sand and just ignore it when it first happened. But truly, there's really no option. If your body's not producing insulin, you can try to ignore it for a long period of time, but it's just gonna make your life more and more difficult. You will feel so much better once you get the proper diagnosis and the proper medication. So I would just strongly encourage anybody who is demonstrating those sort of traits with that type two diabetes diagnosis, at least ask your endocrinologist, can I get a C-peptide test? Can I get an antibody test? Get those two things so at least you have peace of mind. If you find out that you do have the antibodies or you do have a low C-peptide level, you can get insulin potentially and or other treatments to help with that. If you find out that both of those things are normal or if your C-peptide is high, you can now identify clearly that you are insulin resistant and your body is producing actually too much insulin and you will not need exogenous insulin. Instead, you can change lifestyle factors take your oral medications, but at least this gives you a very clear distinction on what you're dealing with. So that's something that I wish I knew earlier, and I would encourage anybody who's dealing with sort of the symptoms that I described with a type two diagnosis to take those steps.